It's been one year since I ran the Can You Taste Sorbate and Metabisulfite test, and I want to come back and taste these again. Let's see what one year has done to them. Let's get started. All right, so I was cleaning out a, um, a closet, just looking for stuff, and I found a box. I was like, oh, what's in this box? Open it up, and it's these, the, the meads from my metabisulfite slash sorbate test. And uh, coincidentally, we are at a, a little over a year since I made these brews and did all the stuff. So, um, let's see what a year has done. Lots of people say that metabisulfite and sorbate have off flavors that are produced, which I don't know if that's true or not. We're kind of here to find out. I don't remember which is which. I have numbers on them. Um, I don't remember which one is which one because it's been a year in my brain. I've thought about a lot of things since then. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack them open. I do have, back behind here, I have a, a number slot for which one I'm currently tasting. So I'm gonna try and keep them there. Um, and then, actually, let me do this. Okay, so I've put a number on each glass so I don't get them mixed up somehow. Um, I'm gonna pour the appropriate one in each one. Again, I don't know which is which. Um, we're gonna we're gonna guess. And then I have a nothing both sorbate metabisulfite um, piece of tape here that I'm gonna attempt to guess and then I'll refer back to my notes and see if I'm right. So let me go ahead and pour these. All right, so if you didn't watch the original video, essentially what I did was I took a regular mead and then I put, uh, I split it in four parts. I put sorbate, potassium sorbate into one of them. These, the prescribed amount for half gallon. Um, prescribed amount of metabisulfite for a half gallon, both of them into one and then left one as a nothing. And uh, I sent the meads out, had people taste test. If you wanna go and watch that original video, I'm not gonna share all of those results um, because we're gonna do this now. So I've poured them, got them all here, and let's get to tasting. Um, I will, I'll tell you which I'm tasting and then somewhere in the corner, you'll see a, a note about what it actually is. So you can get some, uh, I don't know, tasting notes, proper tasting notes. Again, I don't know which is which. So these are all dry, regular traditional meads. Um, I didn't want to add any extra variables. So let's start with number one. Mm, it's It's got a more pleasant aroma than uh, I recall. I remember tasting these when they were about three or four months old and they were not great. It's very fruity. It's got a high amount of floral note. I don't get any um, off fusel got kind of a cherry aroma. Like, I don't know if it's just my brain, but that's got a little bit of a, yeah, like a cherry note. Oh, that, huh. Whoa, whoa, way different aromas. Yeah, okay. This one's got like a kind of a cherry-ish note for some reason. Odd, number one has a cherry slash warm, right? Number two, much more flat, got a little yeastier smell. A little more, um, I just tasted some of my meads that were four and a half years old. It's got this, uh, a little bit of a funk, like a, like a warm funk. It sounds like mold, it's not. It's still got a little honey aroma, but it has some heat on the nose. Oh, this has a vanilla, number three. Some vanilla and cherry, interesting. Why does it smell like cherries? Like, weird, huh, okay. That was number three. Number four, also a slight, it's like an in-between, like number two is flat. Number one and three have this bright cherry. This is in between the two. Yeah, what's, that is very odd to me. Aromas are, are weird. Hmm, okay, let's go backwards. Number four. Yeah, I do get that. Interesting, it does have a slight, almost medicinal cherry taste to it, but it still has honey character and some sweetness. It's a little flat, I mean, it's pretty, th these are not tannic at all, they have no sweetness, they have no real sweetness. It has honey floral side, I should say. Um, hmm. A little yeasty still. 
but overall not bad way better than i previously tried um it does have like a little bit of a bite but i don't notice any I, I guess if you consider like a cherry taste to be an off flavor then that would be true a lot of people say that i think it's metal by sulfite specifically has a celery like taste that uh, develops over time i don't get anything too funky just that interesting cherry breadiness Number two, let me uh, give me something to cleanse my palate. A little water. All right. Number, that was number four. We're on number three now. Ooh, this one has a much bigger body. I feel like this one had, is a little bit lighter. This is a little more thickness, more viscosity to it. It does have that cherry-ish aroma, but doesn't have the same, um, breadiness uh, or alcohol burn that's really I'm not gonna lie when I <coughs> excuse me when I first tasted these I was like crap these are gonna age terribly a year later they're aging pretty well actually not bad actually big body no no off flavor I don't get any um, celery I don't get any um, weird heat I do it, it is a dry traditional and I feel like one component of this I'm finding in all of it is that uh, I believe I used tap water with these and so uh, you do get like I'm familiar with my tap water and you do pick up some of the notes that you get from my little town's uh, tap water so somewhat of an element there I was number three nothing identifiably odd now this one though this one does have a funk number two The, the um, nose is much more flat. It does have somewhat of an essence of that bright cherry-ish note, but it's nowhere near the, the strength that I've got from these two. Oh yeah, a little more bitey. It, the the um, uh, characters have been robbed from this in a lot of ways. Yeah, I don't, but this is, this is missing a lot of, like the honey, honey warmth character is gone. The, the body is different. Like this one's a little more watery, which I don't know why wateriness would be affected by potassium sorbate, meta by sulfite. A little bit confusing there. It does have like a, a funk, a fusel funk. And I don't know, I don't know all of the fusels super well. So don't yell at me in the comments. I'm sorry. Um, but there's a whole list of fusels that put off weird flavors. And sometimes, you know, it can be sulfury, it can be, uh, you know, if people open up your furniture and you're like, that smells like a rotten egg, like that's that's a fusel. I don't, I get a little bit of something, but I don't, it's not that specifically. Something weird. And number one, it does have the cherry aroma again, which, is that oxidization, oxidizing? You know, you get sherry notes by oxidizing. Is that what that I'm getting? But then that wouldn't make sense because three of these have the note and metabisulfite specifically is supposed to help keep from oxidizing. Yeah, um, three, number one and three are like the exact same to me. Big body, lots of those warm cherry notes. No, a no fusel or no identifiable one for me. No, like um, acetone. Acetone is one of those things that you, it's like nail polish remover. Mm. I'm gonna taste around for a second. Yeah, so two is the worst of all. It has, it's just flabby, not a lot of body. Um, it does have a funk to it. The, one and three are the exact same in my brain. They just, they have the same vibe. They don't have any weird off flavor or all the same notes I said. Number four is a little bit different. Kind of in between the two and nose and everything. But it doesn't have, it, it doesn't have like a identifiable too crazy funk. It does have a little bit of like a breadiness to it, like a youthfulness. But these have been aging the same amount of time. So this is quite interesting. 
So there are lots of factors in this test. Um, you know, what people ask, you know, does sorbate and metabisulfite are, metabis <laughs> sorbate and metabisulfite are intended for stabilizing and uh, halting fermentation? Sorbate is what sort of neutralizes the yeast in a lot of ways, and metabisulfite is, is in that same vein, but also um, is intended to help uh, your SO2 levels and essentially pull oxygen out of the brew, which um, is helpful for long-term aging. So now I get to the fun part, the part that actually I'm dreading a little bit, because this is hard. Um, for the sake of this argument, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little more tasting, and then I'm gonna try and take a guess at which is which. Okay, I think I have my guess. I I, I feel here. Let me explain my results. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna give the both guess first. I'll go what I think is the both, then the metabisulfite, then the sorbate, then the nothing. I think number four is the both version. Um, because it does have a little bit of a weirdness to it that um, the body is kind of funky, but it feels like it's been a little bit more preserved, like the characters are there, but uh, it doesn't have any gross, not gross, any weird aging flaws. Uh, it, it's, it's just kind of bleh. I don't understand the difference between the body here, honestly. Um, I wish I had better terms. I think number four is the both. I think number, I say sulfite. I'm gonna go with sulfite. I think number three is the sulfite. Um, I'll show you that. Sorbate and metabisulfite are so similar tasting, but the met the metabisulfite has a little more butteriness to it, and part of me wonders that. Uh, I don't know. I'm cre I'm creating theories right now, so please don't hear me say these things as real. Um, I'm wondering if sorbate will not have the same, does not have the same buttery side because of how it affects a brew. So metabisulfite has a little more buddy, but, buttery. Number three has a little more butteriness to it. Number one is my guess for the sorbate and same vibe as the metabisulfite, air quotes around that, but it doesn't have the butteriness. And number two, I'm guessing is the nothing. I, I just, I wonder, my guess is that because it has had nothing to help preserve it a little better that the, um, it hasn't been as preserved. Now, one thing to note, one, three, and four all have the same-ish vibe, and then there was an outlier in this, and that is the, the nothing version. So because these three were so close, and the number of, uh, two was so out there, it makes me wonder if number, if that's another guess, why, well, that's another reason why I'm guessing that the nothing is number two. So let me get my um, actual results and then we'll talk. Today on Mead Mythbusters, we're testing if you can actually taste potassium metabisulfite and potassium sorbate with. Okay, now this is interesting. So, um, if, again, if you want to watch the original video about how these were created, please go back and do that. I worked very hard on that video. <laughs> um, so, here are the results. As I'm reading them, you've seen the results. Um, number one was the metabisulfite version, so I was wrong about that. Number two was the nothing version. Number three, which I put on, I put number three on the metabisulfite was the sorbate. And number four was the both. So these results are very interesting. Now I wanna kind of unpack them a little bit. Number two, as I noted this whole time, is funky. And, and I know some of you are viciously typing in the comments or, or thinking in your head, I bet he looked at the results before and he's trying to play it or whatever. Y'all, I make so much freaking mead and do so many projects. I, I genuinely wish I could remember everything that I do, but I can't, I don't. I had to, I deleted, literally had deleted the files off my computer for that whole test, which probably not smart on my end, but I had to go back to the YouTube video to find out what the heck I did. That That's how kind of unorganized, how much I don't remember what happens. So number two had the nothing, had a, it, it does not feel as well preserved. It does have off flavors. And I mean, it still 
has retained floral-ish notes, but there is a funk to it. That's kind of weird. And I don't, I don't like it as much. I'm trying to also let these breathe a little bit so that maybe, maybe some new notes will pop out as I'm, as we're sitting here. But number two just had some funkiness. It's like, it's not bad, but it definitely is different. And as it breathes, I will say that some of that funkiness is leaving <laughs> a little bit and it's becoming more tame, but something weird. What is interesting about this one, it does not have the same kind of dark, uh, a cherry fruity character that the other three have. So that's a weird note. Then uh, I'm gonna go backwards. So then the sorbet version, which was number, I'm gonna, I'm gonna correct my, my results real fast. So sorbet was three, metabi sulfite was one, both. Um, the sorbet version does have an interesting cherry note. It's the, the body is pretty viscous and full. It does have, um, I mean, they all have a tinge of bite, I will say. Being dry, they probably need a long time to age before they will be comfortably good. The, the only, the notable thing there is that cherry flavor, which some of you, I don't know, maybe that's, that is a, a problem with sorbate metabisulfite. Um, have you, I, I've never experienced that. I've never gotten cherry-like flavors out of things, but, my question to you is, have you ever got those weird cherry flavors out of something that had sorbate in it? This could just be a one-off weird circumstance. I don't know, I, and I think it is, because I've literally never had this problem, and I've used sorbate and metabisulfite a lot. So, there's that. Uh, metabisulfite, number one, it's a little thinner, which is interesting. It makes me wonder why these are different, why these are thinner, I guess. Maybe there was more, because this is supposed to get rid of oxygen. Maybe this the, the sorbate had a little more oxygen built up into it, but I don't see why that would affect the body too much. But I'm also not a mead scientist. But it does have the cherry notes. And then last but not least, the both, they kind of had a blend, honestly. A blend of these two things. Now, uh, if I were to prefer one, honestly, if I were to, to drink one of them, to choose to drink one, It'd probably be just the sorbate, and uh, it's because it has the, all of the nice, the, the honey notes and the, the weird fruity notes and the body that I like. The other three are, are well, these two are fine. One and four are fine. The nothing version kind of falls flat. Honestly, it's not great. And I, I'm saying this, and I know some of you, again, viciously typing in the comments, are saying, well, I would never, the Vikings never had... I don't know why I'm country. The uh, Vikings never had potassium sorbate metabisulfite, and they survived. Um, yes, you're right. But there's this thing called modern science, and um, there's a reason the Vikings lived 40 to 50 years, and why we live, I don't know, 60 to 80 years on average. So I'm going to trust a little bit of science. Uh, if you do not want to use sorbate metabisulfite, that's fine. Literally fine. The good news for you is... There are alternatives. There's a thing called pasteurizing. If you would like to halt fermentation slash be able to back sweeten without these two things, pasteurizing. Um, you can age things for an eternity and hope your yeast just die off. It's not necessarily a true and uh, great way to do it. You can cold crash, but you have to really know what you're doing. I've had brews come back to life after cold crashing, so there's only really two ways to halt fermentation or to keep fermentation from happening again, and that's to either pasteurize or to use potassium metabisulfite and uh, sorbate in conjunction. The, the most exciting news out of all this video, I know this is a long one, but I still have four bottles of this brew. So guess what? A year from now-ish, <laughs> you are going to see that same, or this same test again, and maybe I'll uh, get a friend to come over and, and taste test with me. At the end of the day, brew the way you want. Um, I personally will choose to still continue to use uh, sorbate and metabisulfite. This is, um, this whole situation is assuming that you're not back sweetening at all. And lots of times when you back sweeten, I'll, I'm sure a lot of these flavors could be demolished. You know, a lot of the weird things that you get. Again, brew the way you want. Please do not, and I, I'm gonna say this now, do not go down in the comments and start 
flaming people and getting super mad at them or me for using these things. That is that is stupid. If you are angry and you're upset about me using this stuff, that's fine. I'm so sorry. I also gave you the alternatives on what you can use and I've used the alternatives. So I get tired of people getting down in the comments and, and losing their mind telling me how to brew. Um, I, I want to brew the way I want to. I want you to brew the way you want to. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. It's been a lot of fun. Um, it's kind of cool to see these meads age. They are immensely better than they were at that four month mark when we did the test. So we will see in a year what these are like with two years of age. And who knows, maybe the nothing version will rise from the ashes and um, take over and kick these other ones in the face. We'll find out then. I hope you have a great day. Cheers. <laughs>